Hi everyone, I have another after action report coming your way. I recently had an opportunity to travel to the Altair training facility near Naples, Florida for an exploratory course put on by Lieutenant Colonel Mikey Harmon, formerly of the Israeli Defense Force. Mikey is a special guy, to say the least, with a level of experience that few can touch. 20 years in which he built the IDF shooting doctrine and created and commanded the marksmanship and sharpshooting schools in Israel. During his tenure, Mikey trained over 500,000 soldiers. Needless to say, when you get an invite like that, you show up. The purpose of this course was to expose a group of receptive American minds to a foreign way of doing things and see what sticks. I think that the best thing to do would be to let the man speak for himself. So what we do, we have three different targets that we use. This is our silhouette target in the IDF. This is our shoulder target in the IDF. And this is our head target in the IDF. So the way we do this, the idea is that depending on position, range, we choose a target, okay? The farther the distance we go, the larger the target is that we're shooting at. So if we go backwards from 300 meters, we shoot at the full silhouette, then we go back to about 150, we shoot at the shoulder target, and from 100 to zero, we're shooting at the head target. That's basically what we're doing in the prone position. Standing position, we're gonna be shooting shoulder targets at 25 today. If we see we're doing very well, we're gonna go to head targets and see how we do with that, okay? Each one of these is part of the other. So if you look at this closely, they're the exact same, just cut in a different place, okay? We're Jewish, we gotta just save money somehow, okay? So th this is the way it's built, and we actually put a, a line here. If you guys see this line, I said, mentioned it yesterday. This is exactly where you cut it, so it, make, it gives you a head target. So that's the exact place where a head target is cut, okay? And this way, I save a head target and I have less um, uh, contra of the, of the wind. Uh, I told you guys yesterday, I remember doing this in my office. We took a, a knife and we just cut here and here and here and here. Arbeo Tirto. And now we, you, we take our wooden stick, which we call a shidri, and we slide it in there like a pocket. And this is the way it stands uh, in, in the IDF. Okay, that's the way we use it. And number four, the stock is low and they go looking for the sights. Okay, those are the four mistakes you will see. One, two, no contact, three, and four, I'm low, and I go down, okay? So when we wanna do this, if we do it in one second, when we go into the standing position, we're doing one, two, and three just quickly. But there is a one, there is a two, I'm not doing it together. So it's boom, 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 okay? Boom, boom, boom. Understood? Ready to go? M16's on everybody. So we're seeing this. You guys are going forward, okay? Doesn't make it as if you're standing and doing this, or if you're going forward like this. We need there to be an equal amount of weight between the legs. Now, when you're there, you can feel you're there, just steady. The reason we do this, the reason, is now I am more steady, okay? It's easier, when I put weight on my front leg, it hurts, I'm, I'm, I'm using more muscle. This, the, the right leg becomes not relevant. So we need there to be equal weight on both. We do not go forward. There is no recoil in a nine millimeter or five, five, six. It's a joke, okay? So you don't have to be protecting yourself against that, okay? So we do not go forward. We wanna be 45 and like this. There are some of you that are doing this when you're shooting. You are moving your shoulder up like this and it's not natural, okay? It's not a natural thing to do, okay? So I don't want you to even think about your shoulders. Just want you to pick up the weapon. This was a three-day course. We spent a great deal of time on the individual positions as well as on theory in the classroom. In fact, the whole first day focused on the prone position alone as a basis for which the other positions are built. Both on the range and in the classroom, Mikey went into a lot of detail about biomechanics as it relates to practical applications on the field. While the lecture components are slam packed with more information than you can write, I think that the following explanation of the kneeling position gives you a good sense of the specificity Mikey is looking for. It's a transformation phase. We are not going to be in kneeling for a long time. 
Okay, we're not going to do an ambush in kneeling. So I'm normally doing kneeling in one of two situations. I have a stoppage when I'm standing, so I got to go down and deal with it. And then I, if I'm already there, I'm going to shoot from there. Or I'm moving somewhere. I have to get from point A to point B. And in the middle, I have to shoot. Okay, I will always look for uh, a, a safety. I would always look for a uh, cover. 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 I will always look for cover. I don't want to be without cover. Okay? But if I don't have cover, I go down, I give the enemy less of a target. I'm more stationary because I'm putting my elbow on my leg. I'm not leaving it up in the air like some of you guys shoot sometimes. When we teach kneeling, it's the same form of five point contact with the weapon. That doesn't change. Same 45 degrees, that does not change. What we want to do is we want to have our toes of our foot pointing towards the target. We want our left foot to be straight. We do not want it in. We do not want it out, okay? We want it straight because we want the weight to go straight from my hand, from the weapon to my hand, to my knee, to the ground. When I put my elbow on my knee, I do not want it on the knee because it's going to move. So I have two options. Or I go back and lock, or I go forward and lock. Either way is good for us in the IDF. You can go this way, or you can go this way, as long as it's locked, okay? I'm building a 90 degree angle between my right knee and my left leg. This is the 90 degrees that we're talking about. I am now sitting on my toes. I'm gonna to turn around in a second so you guys can see that. When I shoot, if you guys remember, we bring the sight to our eye. If you feel that you are not um, stable enough, you're allowed to bring the magazine to your arm and put it on it. It hurts more, especially if you don't have long sleeves, but it's a lot, it locks it. The, the, it, it shortens the movement. Okay, I have my right elbow up, so I have some connection between my shoulder and my stock, and this is the correct position. As you can see, the way the IDF does things is significantly different from the way we traditionally do things here in the United States. To that end, I took a moment during the break to speak with my friend David Fourier about some of the take-homes from this class. You may know David from some of his publications in Guns and Ammo and Firearms News. All right, boys and girls, down here at the Altair Training Center for the CAA Train the Trainer IDF style, I'm here with the David Fourier. Buddy, give us one thing that you thought was a extreme take home from this class. Um, well, the whole thing's very interesting. One of the things that I personally liked to see was just exactly how they did um, their positional shooting. And we'll say one, just one thing that I liked was their five points of contact when shooting. Uh, in particular, uh, the fore uh, the magazine against your forearm, mm -hmm. okay, just to add stability when you're shooting. I thought that was interesting and just to see their application, how they set their positions up. Uh, it's different than Americans. Obviously, their prone position is very different. Um, and I thought that that was very useful. It was actually very stable, you know, muzzle going straight up, return straight back down, made for very quick shooting. So I thought that was very interesting. I would 100% uh, I would agree with you. Um, one of the things that we learned yesterday uh, was the, the sitting position that they use in ambushes a lot over there. And I've shot from sitting before, uh, but when we got to re-zero our guns today, we got to choose our position, and I totally chose the sitting position because it's by far the most, their way is the most stable way to do it, hands down. Yeah, uh, I mean, I'm a NRA high power shooter, so sitting is, you know, one of your bread and butter positions, and it was actually my favorite position. They have a completely different take on it as far as how they set you up, the angle that you're at, uh, the way that your uh, knees are used or not used, and I thought that that was very interesting too. Good take, good comment. Um, one last thing, we got to use a couple different products here today, the, uh, you know, the MH1 and the, and the Microroni. Um, what was your take on those products just really quick? Uh, the red dot's really interesting. They have, you have to understand their thought process behind the red dot as far as the way it's designed, the reason why it's designed like that. Uh, they've got some really good features mixed into it based entirely on combat experience. Uh, the Microroni is really interesting. If you need an extremely compact package that can be tucked away neatly out of sight that doesn't bust the bank like a MP5K would. I 100% I agree. David Fourier, everybody, thank you very much for uh, taking some no time problem, out there. No man, it was great seeing you. The last thing that I wanted to close with is the following. 
Mikey Hartman is one bad mamma jamma. He has spent decades defending his homeland from monsters that seek to annihilate his people based on their heritage and religion. Sure, he has killed his fair share of people, if you can even call them that, but you would never know it. Don't get me wrong, the man knows his shit, and he'll let you know that he knows his shit. However, at the end of the day, he is one of the most humble people I know. And that is exemplified by his closing statements at the end of the first day. Uh, what was interesting to see sometimes that in certain scenarios, uh, some guys were better than they were in other scenarios. We've had, we had guys that were hitting almost every target and then we got to certain places and they had a trouble. And then that was, that's all good for me because that's just make you guys better and make you guys know where you're weaker and make you guys understand where I can improve. You guys all came out here uh, wanting to learn. So there is nothing better for an instructor to have people that want to learn. It is by far the best thing that we can have because we have people that want to hear what we have to say. You don't have to agree with us, but people are listening to us, okay? Today was a prone day. Tomorrow we're gonna be doing a, a much more, a, we're gonna be shooting a lot more tomorrow. It's gonna be more on the standing and the kneeling and the sitting stoppages. It's gonna, we're gonna be shooting more rounds down range. What's incredibly important for me that you guys learn today what to look at from the right, what to look at the back, what to look at the left, learn how to use the, the, the shooting mattress, which was, which was a big A today. I think it taught you guys what we're trying to teach in that, those angles. Um, we want to hear any feedback that you guys have about today, any suggestions for tomorrow if you guys want to, things that we can do better, whatever you guys feel that you want, we need to hear, we would love to hear. Be ready, seven, four, two, one, five, good. We want you guys to study each other when you're shooting, see the mistakes. I don't want to just make you guys better shooters. I don't think we're going to do that. What we do want to make you shoot is better trainers, okay? Love you all, but sometimes you got to stop, take a time out, and what are we here for? Okay, we're here for that. Are we clear? Yeah. Let's go to work, guys. <laughs>